You're listening to Experience This, a show about the emerging experience economy with your host, Tom Young. Hey, thanks, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is Tom Young. Let's go around the room. This is Bart Gallo. And Karen Boshwood. Hey, we're here. Thanks, Bart, for joining us on this uh, Experience This as our special guest from our other sister show. Welcome, Bart. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Well, we, this we is a wa- fun show. Studio looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> We wanted you here because you participate in a lot of the conversations we're going to have today about this topic, and the topic is uh, voyeurism, and not in the way that's ta- classically used the word, but voyeurism in the sense of watching someone else live. Mm-hmm. Digital voyeurism. Digital voyeurism, yeah. right? And so there's a you know to open this up, I want to play uh, a quick snippet from a YouTube video of Alan Watts. And we have Alan Watts here in our studio as our inspirational leader. Uh, his picture's up on the wall here. But he has a, uh, a there's a discu- there's a talk called Awakenings on YouTube, and someone mashed up some video to go with something he talked about in the 1960s about you know, the technology isolating people and they live through, vicariously through watching others live through this, he calls it a Twittering screen, but that, and that and back then it was a TV, but now it's, you know, yeah, pervasive. These, these light squares are in our hands all the time. And yeah. so let's just play that clip real quick and then we'll just talk about that. Okay. We want to get everything done as fast as possible. We want to convert the rhythms and the skills of work into cash which indeed you can buy something with, but you can't eat it. And uh, then rush home to get away from work and begin the real business of life, to enjoy ourselves. And uh, you know, for the vast majority of American families, the, what seems to be the real point of life, what you rush home to get to, is to watch an electronic reproduction of life. You can't touch it, it doesn't smell, and it has no taste. You might think that people getting home to the real point of life in a robust material culture would go home to a colossal banquet or an orgy of lovemaking or a riot of music and, music and dancing, but nothing of the kind. It turns out to be this purely passive contemplation of a twittering screed. You see, mile after mile of darkened houses with that little electronic screen flickering in the room. Everybody isolated, watching this thing. Well, that's a very, very, very powerful clip. I've watched this video a few times. You should watch the whole video. We'll put the link in the show notes. I'm glad I was sitting down for that. (laughs) Well, you know, I find that when I listen to Alan Watts on commentary of culture, it's amazing 50 years ago how yeah. spot on he was about where things are at in the human condition relative yeah. to that. Mm-hmm. So I'm a big Alan Watts fan, one of the reasons why we have his picture up on our wall. And uh, But very interesting. Now let's fast forward to our uh, contemporary culture, where we happen to be at with this concept of digital voyeurism where people are just, you know, we see it all around us. It, 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 it drives I'm guilty me nuts. of it. I, I, I'm not joining this show because I feel like I'm above digital voyeurism, and I want to comment oh. on it to I, help I was... other people. I'm living in this. I, you know, I had a Facebook when it came out two years <laughs> yeah. before I went to college, so I was kind of. In I was the, thinking about this too. None yeah. of us are immune to this. Yeah, no. It's... We're talking about it not to say we're better. We're just pointing it out so that people are aware of it and can take better control, and also understand that it's. It's interesting at some level, but it's it has it, in the extreme it has a big negative impact on on you and your life and your o- overall happiness. Yeah, and I think it's important to recognize that it's not some accidental side effect of everyone playing with these cool new apps. So uh, we'll, we'll share this in the show notes. I have an image up on the screen. This um, and a digital entrepreneur author. He's a guy from Israel named Nir Eyal. I think is how you pronounce it. And he's got this famous book about building habit forming digital products and just. There's there's a whole community of new, oh, yeah. new age business folks out there who are focused on making these social media platforms addicting. And luckily, we've we've talked about in some of our other shows. There's uh, thank God there's people who are actually trying to do work and getting people off the addictions as well. So it, it's it's interesting. 
Uh, and we're going to go back to obviously the topic of today's show. But it, it's definitely interesting that this stuff exists. But at least there's a, a couple of guys out there. Um, and one of them is uh, Tristan Harris. So he's an ex-Google guy who helped work on mm-hmm. product design. And he has now branched off and started this whole movement around designing products that are not addictive because he realized like what the intention actually is. Well, That's awesome. The yeah. perverse in, there's a perverse incentive by many of the companies that are pushing these products and services out there to get you to spend more time with them. So the addiction is part of the business model where if they can get an extra 10%, 15% attention or 50%, whatever that may be, they can sell more ads or whatever it may be. That So that perverse incentive uh, drives this escalating titillation of this digital voyeurism. And so when we step back, we can talk about any one thing, about Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. But even if you step back and you look at things like um, reality TV, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? It, it, now, the reason the reality TV is out there for a couple of reasons, one is low cost production, but you're, you're sitting there and you're watching other people do things and, and finding amusement, but it's very passive. Yeah. yeah. Even though going back to even 20, 30 years ago, you had the uh, America's Funniest Videos. Actually, and I've not found one of them very funny. <laughs> that was probably the start of it, maybe. Like, um, the and clip MT- shows? Yeah, the clip shows, and then uh, MTV kind of started it, because they had the, I forgot what the show was, when everyone the lived in the world? house. The, the real world. world. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that was like the first so, start of so people look, just watching. New era of media. You're yeah. looking at yeah. other people's home videos, and you're like, oh, that's fine. It's just like <laughs> one after the other. You're just... It's digital voyeurism. You really feel like you're using the worst, lowest part of your brain when you're watching yeah. that stuff, too. So, I agree. So just just for full confession here, well, sometimes my daughters and I will be hanging out on the weekend, and we'll get like massive amount of takeout, uh, you know, Chinese food, Italian, the whole nice. thing. And we'll just sit there, and we'll pig out, and we'll watch my 600-pound life. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, it is, it, and we do it, make a big joke about it, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm not immune to doing this myself, but I find that if, if you participate in life, you're much more happy than if you watch others. Yeah. But it's so much easier just to watch others. Well, so there's this article um, put out by Bustle.com, which yeah. is a publication, and um, it, it was interesting because they were basically talking about, so they're trying to get to why why are people doing it? And some of the, the research that they did was that one, it's like it gives people power. For some reason, as you're watching through other people's lives passively, you get some type of power off of it. I feel like you have a bird's eye view of, of the yeah. world beneath you or something. And then the second was that was interesting where they said that humans actually are innately curious. And so maybe this is just part of the, you know, humans tapping into the like psychology of being curious natured uh though i thought that was really interesting yeah i when i think of the way people interact with these platforms it just seems like this this very weird symbiosis between like your digital voyeurism is my digital narcissism and we're all doing it bi-directionally to each well, other you, you and have, it's how these platforms are multi-billion dollar empires. well you, you uh, when you are a voyeur you you have to feed the beast so you want to participate you want to say i want to show my stuff yeah and i was watching over this past weekend father's day weekend i had the u.s open on i was living vicariously watching others play golf and uh i was noticing at the end all these people had were at the event which is, which is cool, you go to the event, I've been to a few golf tournaments like that, they're great. But everyone's standing on the final tee and no one is actually watching the guy tee off. They're all holding their cameras up, videotaping the guy hit the drive down the 18th fairway and looking at a video that no one will ever look at again. <laughs> no, Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. It's, Once it's archived, I have right? it in 4K uh, on, on, on Fox uh, Sports, why do I wanna watch your crappy uh, cell phone video? So it show you were there. It's just it's crazy, and I, and you watch this. And Kieran, what prompted this whole episode is you sent me a picture. And Bart, I just sent it over to you on i iMessage. Okay, uh, it's a picture uh, from the New York subway. Yeah, this is and oh it, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a picture of the the slogan is, and we can put this up on the screen. Enjoy Vienna, 
not Vienna hashtag, and it shows a picture a guy, you know, a metrosexual uh, soy boy laying down, uh, <laughs> or just a guy. Yeah, he's a dude who likes this taking pictures. This is modern day, you know. What yeah. did I say? <laughs> okay, uh, whatever. I don't know. All right, I'm so, a, I've taken a picture in that position before. I'm a little offended. All right, well. <laughs> I owe you a check your soy milk. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so by the it's way, a, oat milk is a new thing. Just okay. so. very good, <laughs> very nice. Anyway, this is a the issue of hey, be there. Don't take pictures to not be there, and it kind of disrupts the whole thing, right? So this prompted this whole topic of just being in the moment, and you know, this is this is you know. Yeah. I'm sure we've all done this. I'm not immune. Again, we're not. We're not saying we're immune to it, but we're now we're commenting on this so that people can be aware of it more. So, Bart, you had a video from one of these. It was Coachella. Coachella. Yeah, this is this is great. Why don't we, I, uh, why don't we play this in the background while we're uh, while we're talking a little bit? By the way, speaking of an, an example of me being guilty of this digital voyeurism thing, I, I would never attend Coachella, but I spent three hours of my time searching <laughs> the hashtag the week after it happened and just seeing the comedy gold of content that people post willingly. Yeah. I spent, I think I did it for three hours. So just to give people, I was just going on the Coachella hashtag and looking through the 4 million pictures that people posted. That's wild. Yeah. So this, yeah. I wish you didn't curious. tell me that because now I feel like I'm going to go do that. It's, <laughs> no. it's uh, Read all the captions too. It's yeah. amazing. Karen, so, let's, let's open my early onset Alzheimer's. I forget that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is, Coachella has uh, kind of become the most famous music festival yeah. over the past few years. It's like sort of innately tied to kind of that social media sort of culture. Um, and people generally think of a music festival as something you go to to live in the moment, put the phone away. And this is just a video of some of the uh, behavior you'll see of just people obsessed with their phones and taking pictures <laughs> when they should be enjoying, uh, you know, whatever's going on at the festival. So, yeah. by the way, Bart, uh, the new terminology mm -hmm. is that you're actually not a snoop. You're a highly evolved social researcher. <laughs> <laughs> So Jordan can play that during that, that, yeah. that in post production. You can put that in in the background. Yeah, we can look at it. But you you think of the, the this you know we talked about even launching launching this whole podcast series on this topic, which was we see digital disruption in our world and it's it's changing things, and there is good and bad that comes from it. Right, Correct. there's a, a tremendous amount of good that comes from digital tech, but we're we're pointing out the bad here and how to. Be aware of it. There's, it's the first, the first thing to deal with is to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, none of us are immune to this digital voyeurism. It's easy to fall into it. I think. Would you guys agree with this comment that it's better to live life than to watch others do it? I mean, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, definitely. so like reality TV, even all the way out to pornography, it's like watch other people screw around. It's supposed, you know, to, you know. And Alan Watts talked about that. If you listen to the Awakenings about this notion of you know, you'd think that people rush home to participate in life, and no, they're w rushing home to sit in front of the TV and watch others do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think, though, about, so for elderly people who are alone, so I was thinking about, there's a clip, which is also hilarious, in South Korea at 24-7, and I think we have a clip of it. You can basically log in um, through an app, and watch people eat and then and then interact with them and talk to them about what they're eating and like you know i don't even know what kind of crazy conversations they have but i was thinking at first i was like this is so bizarre but what about like people that are elderly and home by themselves uh, and not necessarily that they're sitting there watching someone eat food but if there's a way for them to interact with others maybe that's positive well so i would i would make it you know People want to anthropomorphize the the technology in of itself, saying it's good or bad. It's not. It's neither. It's just the application is good or bad. Mm -hmm. If if you have the ability to go out and and do things and live, and you choose to sit on the couch or sit in front of your light square, or your phone, or whatever it is, and watch others do it, that's probably not a good thing. Right. It's not yeah. bad in dribs and drabs to get a sense of things where you're you know you're you're not going to go. Uh, see the protest in Paris or something like that because you can't not gonna fly there. Why do you can watch a clip of it just to get a sense of things? But to ensconce yourself or bathe yourself in it constantly is mm -hmm. probably a problem. If you're blocked from doing something like you're you're sick in bed or you're elderly, it's a great way for you to ex you know be able to do things you couldn't otherwise do. Mm -hmm. 
but it's it's no it's not a substitute for doing the real thing. Yeah. And if it, and if overconsumption of it blocks you from doing the real thing, that's where the real problem is. And all we want to do is make people aware of the pathologies we all fall into here. Right. So it's only bad to the dis- degree that you misunderstand what it is. So for example, if you take the catch-all social media term to think that, oh, when I'm using this, I'm socializing. It's called social media. Yeah. But you're not. It's actually the opposite. You're approaching a state of disconnection versus yeah. connection yeah. by overusing them. Yeah, totally agree. I uh about six weeks ago I deleted I, I deleted Facebook and I deleted Instagram and started I re download Instagram on the weekend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So you down yeah. you download it on the weekend then Sunday or Monday morning. Yeah, just exit out. Delete it again. It's yeah. pretty good. I've heard so of that wh- being a strategy for people a lot. Like, what was the catalyst to uh, I was using them too much. If you check the uh <laughs> everyone the should do this, epic. by the way. Go into your iPhone and check what's using uh, the we, most data. Oh, well, we do screen time. Oh, yeah. I don't even know what mine is. No, no, no. I don't, I'm not do checking you, that one. I'm not a <laughs> madman. How, how do you do that? Um, if you go to a, data or cellular data, I don't have my phone well, down here. I, I, luckily, when they do the screen time, yeah, when they do the screen time, it, it's per device. Cellular data? No, no. It's right here. It's screen time thing. So, oh, I thought you wanted to see the data um, usage. They 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 show all my devices and they'll say the last seven days. So I don't know what's a normal amount of time for screen time. Yeah, per day. I think high school students are up to like eight to ten hours. I would say so, two. Yeah. All right, so I'm close. What are you? Six hours and three minutes. Oh my god, you're in between a high school student and like a normal human being. <laughs> Yours is like two. Yeah, like wow, two hours, two and a half hours. I but I, I honestly, I mean, this is gonna sound crazy i do use mine a lot for work and 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 i and this includes like ways so okay. i use it for navigation but a lot of this stuff is work related and i'm if i'm streaming music in the background it hits that too so i actually look at the um wh- what you're using here and, and get a better sense of it to get a because i i don't want i don't turn on the tv anymore so if i'm going to watch something i might watch it on sit out, outside and watch this but I, i'm trying to dial it back as much as I can yeah. and use less of it. And I, I've been pretty good. I unplugged the TV about a year and a half ago in terms of cable. Yeah. I'll only watch uh, live sports. Yeah. And occasionally I'll watch, uh, I'll stream a movie there. But once I started streaming, I'm like, why don't I just stream it to my device and sit wherever I want to sit? You're always choosing what you want to watch, too. The idea that people are still like cycling through channels. Uh, I, 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 I can't even imagine saying it's eight o'clock. We have to sit down and watch something. It's, it's bizarre, and it's still huge. Wait, so we were talking upstairs. Do you think Netflix is also a type of voyeurism? Yeah, yeah, it can be. Yeah, I mean, I it's still, yeah, t- it's still TV. Yeah, TV. yeah, that's yeah true. it can it can be because you got to also just say what are you watching? It's voyeurism and it's gluttony too, because the idea that a you know, new show's out, let's watch the entire season in one day. I've done that. Wow. Oh, Super Bowl Super shit. Bowl Sunday two years ago. Altered Carbon came out on the same day as the Super Bowl. You watched that instead? I did not watch the Super Bowl. I watched Altered Carbon from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. and went to sleep. <laughs> oh, my God. It was yeah. great. That is really good. Yeah. yeah. I turned on, like, I, I watched The Sopranos maybe two or three times, maybe three times. Yeah. And uh, the last time I watched it, I turned on season one, episode one, and uh, I finished it, like, four days later. It's 85 hours. It was crazy. I mean, I just had it on all the time. I, yeah. I wasn't like watching it. Like, yeah. Did a set. So speaking of voyeurism, I started watching this show on Netflix, uh, Mexican Dynasties, and <laughs> basically about. I, I probably shouldn't even share this on the show, but just <laughs> young affluent people in Mexico. Oh yeah, like the Mexico City crowd. Yeah, a lot of wealth. There. Oh my god, I had no yeah. idea. I mean, I felt like I learned something. Yeah, but. Uh, it's crazy. The best thing that Netflix has, I think, is the your the next episode will start in three, two, one, and there and you it try is. Try to beat it. Like, no, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> I think that was genius. Whoever came up with that at Netflix. Yeah. Well, they're actually getting good on if you like this, you like that. You know, the AI that. Oh, uh, it's uh, fantastic. And uh, it's actually very also good on Spotify. The uh, the ability to get the music. So yeah. I, like I'm, I, I am as addicted to this as anybody. I, I have six hours and three minutes. I'm probably in the top ten percent in terms of use. I'm trying to. I use it more for as much as I can for business and a productivity tool. But I'm, I'm definitely using it a lot uh, more so than normal. 
but I'm trying to be aware of it a little bit more and take control of, of what I'm watching, but I'm not immune to uh, watching fun, you know, a, a guy jump off a, a roof trying to do a backflip and you know, break his arm or something. I want to see that. Yeah. I mean, you guys, I think that's right. The America's Funniest Videos probably started this because that's the type of stuff they used to show. Well, I watch a version of that on um, uh, Twitter called the Darwin Awards. Have you seen oh, this? It's, what is it? Oh, yeah, I've seen you, that. Do, do you have access to Twitter? Uh, no, I'm having some network issues. All right. So, uh, um, if, well, anyways, this, this is a, the Darwin Award on the Twitter feed. You can imagine. They just have <laughs> these people doing ridiculous things. And uh, it's just, I just, I watched it for a few minutes. It's, <laughs> Do you remember? And have you seen Idiocracy, the movie? I uh, believe. It's a, it's a really fun one, and I think it dives yeah, into it, a lot of these, it's these called, pathologies. It's called, it's called Our Life in 2019. Yeah, somewhat. But there's a, there's one scene where uh, the character played by Dax Shepard, who's like the idiot of the future character, is watching TV, and there's just an entire show of people being hit in the groin by a bowling ball. <laughs> That's just the whole show. Wasn't it like now, ja Jackass was also pretty popular, right? Did yeah. it do? Jackass is awesome. Though. <laughs> yeah. I, I Guilty. Love, I love Jackass. Guilty. You too. <laughs> I did. How can you not like yeah. it? I didn't find it. I don't know. I just didn't find it entertaining. Yeah, well, there was a scene where this big guy was chasing a midget down the street in underwear, and it was uh, awesome. At one point, I was like, he was torturing his parents, and I or oh, grandparents. Viva la bam! Oh, maybe that was different. Yeah, right? was I mean, the it's the show. same like, same genre. Yeah, cut from the same cloth. <laughs> And I was like, I, I don't know. I just, I had a hard time getting on board with yeah, it. Yeah. If you look back at the story now that the most famous guy, Steve-O, he's like, uh, he's like drug-free, alcohol-free now, but he was very much not when they were doing all that stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of guys who were like abusing their friend who would do the craziest stuff because he was always messed up. Yeah. Uh, but. But. <laughs> <laughs> look, um, we, we're pointing this stuff out where, where none of us are immune to it. And it's important for us as we think about this increasing uh, cool tech that is vying for our attention that all the goodness that it provides in terms of instant access to information, messaging, sharing pictures with friends and family, uh, in, in improving your communication with your network, it also has the ability to, to prevent you from actually living in the first place. Yeah. And, and enjoying stuff. And like um, I recently, like I'll tell you one of the things I did, uh, I, 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 list, I got Spotify, I played some relaxing music and I sat outside in the back and laid on a lounge chair at night, it was a clear night, and just listened to that for half an hour. And I sent, Karen, I sent you the, uh, the mm -hmm. sound, it was cool, right? It, and that was much, much better than watching uh, Netflix or uh, streaming on Twitter and just reading stuff, and I and I I was tempted while I was doing that to pull out the phone and just scroll to Twitter. It's like it, that was it just ruined the experience. So I just you half were, an hour. You were meditating a little bit. Yeah, you were yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say that's true, but it was. But that was this, this, that was more interesting to me than anything. And uh, and I, again, I I had a long drive this week. I listened to a, a, a podcast called Crime Town. Mm -hmm. That uh, our friend Larry Motter from Cognizant uh, turned me on to, and it was it's uh, like old school radio. So prior to TV, families used to gather around the radio, fireside chat, and listen to. <laughs> yeah. Well, they listened to drama, the radio show dramas, and they had oh yeah, they had the, even the, back in the day, and, and they'd have these thing called foley artists, who would um, uh, they were good at making sound effects for radio. So the An analog take, though. Oh yeah, they would take yeah. like shoes on a table and they they clomp them together so it make it seem like someone's walking down, and they would make all these sounds. And they and foley artists, it's a lost art. But this crime town, they basically tell a story. They use clips and sound effects, and they tell a a, a great story. And uh, it's immersive. I'm driving down the road and I'm driving and you're listening to this, and it's uh it's good to do when you're by yourself. If you're in the car with somebody, you should have a conversation. But it was. You know, I was stuck in traffic. As alternating, instead of listening to music, I listened to that. It was great. Yeah. It's so these are good. opportunities where you, there is some great applications for the technology. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if you don't, if you're not aware of how it's controlling what you're doing, it it is probably not a good thing. So I want to share something. Uh, just switching gears a little bit. Um, we always talk about so the price. Um, 
kind of equating it to the price tag of voyeurism in a way. So Kylie Jenner, um, we before thought she was getting 250K per post on Instagram. It's more. It's a million. Yeah. Get out of here. No, it's a million dollars per post. She's a billionaire, right? Yeah. Yeah. And their whole company and business model started from voyeurism, like the Kardashian show. Yeah, I mean, she looks nothing like she looks on her Instagram. If you see a paparazzi photo of her, it's it's a different person. So that's the other interesting thing about voyeurism, right? Is just being able to change your entire identity online. She gets a million dollars for a A million dollars, yep, per paid Instagram post. So she's up there with um, like Beyonce, Cristiano Ronaldo, Justin Bieber. Her, her cosmetics venture was like wildly successful, right? It was yeah, acquired by one of the giants. And it sold out within a minute. Oh, that's right. Special so, release. Yeah. So you can see the, 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 that is all voyeurism. Yeah. Right? It, it, I want to see what she's doing and someone's willing to pay a million dollars to influence all the people that are doing that. And I, I, what's really funny about it is a lot of the products she's promoting are like cosmetics. Yeah. And that, so it's just layers to the voyeurism and the, and the narcissism, <laughs> if you think of it that way. Yeah. And I couldn't pick her out of a lineup. Well, you have yeah. to know which one you're looking for, her <laughs> or Instagram, her. I mean, it's different people. It's very, it's very terrible. It's scary. It's, uh, anyway, so it's that's wild i mean that's a that's a new data point for me I, i'm kind of blown off by that a million dollars a million dollars a post yeah to hold a beverage but it, but a year ago it was it was a quarter of a million <laughs> yeah it was it, i mean it, it definitely was a quarter of a million so what do you suppose ago, that but... says she's been able to up her rates by 4x in 12 to 18 months i think after she sold out of her cosmetic line and then put her on the cover of forbes it kind of upped her game a bit wow yeah she was on the cover of the four on Forbes. youngest said, billionaire yeah self-made billionaire which there was a whole was 21 debate about became that a billionaire right mm-hmm. that's amazing yeah amazing I, yeah <laughs> i i i, I want to grant it to her i'm sure there was a lot of debate about it but it, it wasn't like a, a divorce that made her a billionaire you know yeah so i don't know but but it's, it's oh, so no 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 she she yeah. absolutely uh, dessert. I'm not saying that. I mean, she, it, it, and it, it's truly self-made. Now she capitalized on uh, her crazy family. Yeah, yeah. I, it's so interesting the start because the mom basically went to Ryan Seacrest, who was a producer at the time, and said, "I have a household of about eight people because it was a, a joint family. Bruce Jenner had kids, and uh, said, you know, she said, I think I could make a show about my household." And the first two seasons were mediocre. And then from there, it just got momentum. But like to see the change of, and maybe they're in like season 11 or 12 now. It's still on the air? Yeah. And people tune in. Have you in. ever watched it? Yeah. I've never seen it. Is it what is it like? <laughs> yeah, it's, Keeping Up With The Kardashians? Yeah. I've never seen it either. It, I mean, it's, I, I don't know. Is it, so what? Is it staged or is it does it feel real to you? I'm sure it's partly staged. Yeah. Um. It's definitely staged and, you know, it's uh, like them living this great lifestyle in L.A. and New York. I also think like the cinematography and like the footage, the lights, the scenery, where it takes place, everything's like uh, um, very affluent and nice. It just you you get sucked into. Oh, my God. Wow. It's pretty cool. There was a show on MTV, the Jersey Shore one. I watched a couple episodes (laughs) of that. Huge fan. (laughs) Huge fan. Here we go. Great time. All right, Bart, give it to us. Jersey Shore is awesome. There was, <laughs> and it, it gets into a lot of very true stereotypes, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I watch a couple. I'm like, wow, I'm never going there again. I, I, I'm, I love Seaside. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, a I, guilty I, pleasure. I, yeah. It's, uh, but th- th- these shows are uh, And amazing. these shows are phenomenal launching pads for a lot of these guys to, like, even the Real Housewives of New York. There's a woman from there who, who spun off her own margarita line, Skinny Girl Margarita, and then sold it for, I don't know, like $200 million. It, it's like, it's phenomenal, the success of like knowing that people are watching it and then these guys are just using it as a platform to launch products. Yeah, there was a big controversy at Rutgers back when I was there because uh, we paid uh, the famous uh, author, Toni Morrison, the yeah. historical author, $28,000 for a speech, and we paid Snooki 
$32,000 for a speech <laughs> in the Wait, same Suki year. Wait, gave a speech? Yeah. At Rutgers? At the student center, yeah. She came and talked about just like, you know, <laughs> leadership for women, something along those lines. That's great. And it was a big, it was a big problem for a lot of folks. <laughs> I was surprised that the university Couldn't see that coming, <laughs> right? No. I am, uh, I remember that there was a little controversy, but I didn't know that. They paid her $32,000. It was a reasonable controversy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, look, the, the, these shows are tapping into something. Yeah. And, you know, uh, people people want a better life. And let me tell you something. Watching other people do it is going to ultimately make you unhappy. Yeah, and the funniest thing is that there's always people that are knocking the Kardashians, and including myself at times, um, saying that they actually have no real talent. But I'm like, wait a minute. There's like a whole, everyone is sitting at home watching them and they're literally getting rich off of that. Yeah, I think we're seeing their characters. I think they're extremely enterprising, smart people. Yeah. Because uh, I, I didn't listen to the whole talk, but if you heard Snooki talking at Rutgers when she was giving this talk, she, she, she's not some, some drunk girl on the boardwalk. You know? Yeah, she's playing a character. Yeah, it's, no, very, it's very clear. My So, but... I, you know, a lot of these celebrities are, at their essence, very unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, th this illusion that more is better is not right. I mean, we know that just from this people who, are, you know, who are rich or unhappy. That's the the more and more doesn't change anything. You're better off, you know. Look, you're going to use this stuff. You're gonna you're gonna participate in it. Just be aware of the effect that it has on you, and you're better off doing stuff versus watching others do it. Yeah. And uh, there's nothing, again, nothing wrong with doing it. We're all going to do it, but just dial it up. Dial it up to do stuff where you're going to do it yourself versus, actually, to dial it down is a better word. Yeah, unhashtag it, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go somewhere. Hashtag unhashtag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Go somewhere and take one picture, not 50. Yeah. Or zero. Or zero. Because you yeah. don't have a camera or a phone yeah. on you. Yeah. I'm even guilty of it. I'm going to Italy next week, and I hashtag the hell out of all these places in Italy just so I could see, oh, well, what's the weather like? How are people dressed? And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I think it's a tool you can use. Like, for example, on Instagram, one of the negative things about it is just like we've been talking about, just following people. But you can use the hashtag system and just follow topics that you like. I think it's example. great for that. Yeah, for I do that. exploring cities and <laughs> different topics. Because mm -hmm. yeah. why would you want to keep up with a particular person and everything they do versus t subjects that you're interested in? Yeah. Let's venture as we're sitting here on Friday this weekend to live a little bit more and watch others a little bit less. That's yeah, a good and mantra. I, yeah, and I just want to leave one more fact. So Kim Kardashian has 141.7 <laughs> million followers. Which one? Kim? Kim, yeah, yeah. Is that a lot? That's a lot, I assume, right? I mean, it's the most. Does anyone it's have more? It's not the most. Uh, it's a I lot. Think, who is it? Katy Perry, I think, on Twitter. Or Selena Gomez. Yeah. Yeah. I know you left us with a really good point, but <laughs> just threw that. <laughs> yeah, that in. No, that was perfect. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go read Twitter for a while. And, <laughs> no, seriously. I need to check my Instagram. You know, just be aware of it and. Make a make a minor shift and see if you notice it. And follow me. Yeah, there you go. And follow us on uh, <laughs> rumjog.com, Instagram, etc. All right. Well, thanks everybody. See ya. Right, hey, thanks for listening to the show, Karen. I think you were supposed to say that. Yeah. Thanks. I'll take it from here. All right. Well, we got to do the. This is the new Outcast. Oh, the out outro. The outro. I think Outcast is a new word. All okay. right. Outro. We're doing a new outro. We got to cover a few things. All right. One is what subscription. Do you subscribe to? We want people to subscribe to this, not just listen to it occasionally. Okay, yeah. Check the us out. The second thing is, nothing's better than what? A, a five-star rating. Always five stars. Got to give us the five stars because we get better search outcomes. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is comments. We need those. Yeah, we, we need your feedback. We want to know what people are thinking. So you can check us out. The best way to do it, if you're not sure, some people don't know how to do it, go to our website. You can check it out. We'll have a full set of instructions. Uh, so whatever app you're using... Most people use, what do you use? Uh, I use Spotify. You do? Yeah. So we have Spotify, we have iTunes, uh, YouTube, there's a whole bunch. Of, whatever you use, we have it. And if, and if we don't have it, let us know and we'll try to figure out how to get it. We can send you a paper-based instruction. <laughs> actually, 
Actually, we do have paper-based instructions, even though that's a fun inside joke to our team. So anyway, yep. thanks for listening and check us out uh, in our next shows. Thanks. See ya.